Okay. Um, yeah, so again, good morning, everybody, uh, to those of you that are here. Uh, I'll uh, try and keep an eye on the chat today. Um, if you've watched the the uh, the lecture from Monday, you'll you'll have noticed it was really really short. It's like a three minute video, and that's just because I was announcing again that we have this test coming up, and that there's no new material for the week. Um, homework for uh, through chapter two, and also just sections three one and three two is due Monday, um, and tomorrow, I guess tonight at twelve oh one at you know, just after midnight. Um, the test will be live on Blackboard, and so today is just a another study session for the test. Um, I've put I don't know how many questions I've put together, uh, a lot of questions in in a presentation here, and we'll we'll just start going through them. And that's what I did on Monday too, is I took a mock test, a test that I gave years ago, uh, for this class, and I just went through them and recorded myself doing solutions. So. Today will be largely the same thing, but it'll be <clears throat> hopefully a little more interactive uh, than the <clears throat> than the conversation. <clears throat> excuse me, than the conversation we had at the beginning of this class. Hopefully, it's a little more interactive than that. Um, if not, that's fine. I can just sit here and do problems for you. I guess um, I've got a poll question right towards the end, so do stick around for the whole the whole time today if you want to be counted as here. Um, and then uh, let's see what else is there. I had a couple questions about the test, um, and and I, I guess they're in regards to uh, the announcement I made last week. So I was in this this meeting where we talk about the test, all the pre-calculus professors, and we were reminded that it needed to be timed, which is not something that I thought needed to happen. I thought we could just let you take it. And if it took you seven hours over the course of two days, then it took you seven hours. That's not the case. I was mistaken. So I announced last week uh, that I'm I'm going to give you two and a half hours to take the test. And I'll answer that question in a second, Nina. But um, you'll have two and a half hours to take the test. Now, the test I'm going to write is going to be similar to the mock test in length. Now, I, if you've watched the movies, I was able to do that writing it on my computer, which is a lot slower than writing by hand. Um, I was able to do that while recording it and fiddling with recording stuff in between uh, problem sessions uh, where you know I, I recorded a video, did some stuff, recorded the next video, did some stuff, recorded the next video. I did that in, an, in a little less than an hour and a half total. So that's me. So I, I know what I'm doing on the test, so I assume I go a lot faster than you do. But I also had a lot of extra downtime. Okay, so um, with the recording and with the writing of, uh, with the mouse instead of a pencil, so uh, an hour and a half should be sufficient. Um, in the past, it was. I gave that test in an hour and twenty minute session years ago. So students back then could do it. Um, I assume you are similar. Uh, so. Hopefully you can do it in an hour and a half. If not, I'm still giving you an extra hour. So you'll have two and a half hours to complete the exam. Uh, one of the questions uh, that I got in an email was, how am I checking time? Uh, so Blackboard, whenever you commit an action, whenever you like uh, log in, whenever you click on my course link, whenever you download a file, uh, it has these logs where it keeps track of these actions that you do. So I have access to the actions that you commit uh, in, in regards to my class. So I can see, in other words, when you click on the test to download it, I can see the timestamp for that. And it'll tell me, you know, uh, so-and-so downloaded the test at this time. Okay. So then I can also see when you upload your test. So it, it's, it'll take me a little bit of arithmetic uh, but so long as the time in between when you download and when you upload the test, so long as that's not more than like two and a half to three hours, we're, you're fine, okay? You don't need to worry about it. If you go over two and a half hours a little bit, that's fine because I'm, I'm, I've said before that um, the time required to scan, and so this will get at Nina's question, the time it'll take for you to scan your written work 
uh, whether that is on the printed version of the test or whether it's just on you know some scratch paper that you've got laying around I I have old calendars that I like to do paper you know work on and then scan the <laughs> scan this side um, I, everybody does that I guess right right on old calendars as scratch paper whether you do it on the printed version of the test or whether you do it on scratch paper you just scan that and you'll upload it to blackboard um, so I'm giving you you know I sometimes my scanner doesn't work right the first time so I'll give you you know 30 minutes to get a scan going and then upload it back okay so two and a half hours for the taking of the test a buffer period of 30 minutes for down or for for scanning and and uploading it back so we'll just draw the line at three hours if the total time between download and upload is more than three hours then we're gonna have a discussion okay so I'll start a discussion at three hours I, I won't I won't even sit send anything but if it's like four hours or five hours I'm gonna shoot you an email and we're gonna get to the bottom of why it took you so long so either be ready to have a really darn good excuse or uh, tell the truth, which is what I would prefer. And if, it, if you had to take longer than that, so be it, right? We'll figure out something. Like maybe you could put a check mark on your test like everything after here was longer than two and a half hours. That might, you know, we could have a discussion like that. And then instead of just giving you a big fat zero for the test because you, you violated the time limit, then we can have a discussion of, okay, what should you get, right? What's, what's a fair assessment score? Okay, did I miss another question? I think that answers Nina's. So you don't have to print it. You can just view it on your screen, write on scratch paper, scan your scratch paper. Okay, Giselle says that there's a group me for the course. That's great. If you need help grappling with the content, you're invited. So you just click the link that she's got there, and I guess that's, again, I don't know what a group me is. Um, Giselle, do you want to take 30 seconds to just explain what that is? Um, basically, it's just a group chat for those of us that are struggling with the course because I know I definitely understand some content more than others. So, like, you know, for those of us that could help each other out, like, it's just there, you know, for we could ask the questions because I know taking the class, you know, like sometimes online and other times in person is a little hard, yes. um, especially because it's math. So, yeah. Um, I also wanted to ask a clarifying question. Yes. Um, about whether we're scanning like the work that we're doing on the act on the extra um scrap paper or is this something else that you're looking for i'm sorry i just didn't catch that yeah um so um, maybe i can see if i can give you an example i'm looking at my recycling bin here which is where i throw all of my deleted work yeah so like um, when I do my homework and, and tests for other classes, it, it, it's the same thing that, I, that I'm asking you to do, really. Uh, the professor has a really nice like PDF of written, you know, written questions and material to do. And then what I do is, um, you know, I've got all this like junk that is like like unintelligible scratch. You know, like this, this is just me trying to figure out the problem in the first place. So I don't care about that stuff. Okay, if it's, if it's stuff that I wouldn't look at and say, oh, he deserves an extra point for that, or she deserves half a point for that. If it's that stuff, if it's not that stuff, rather, I don't, I don't want it. So don't scan that type of stuff. But here's an example of like my completed homework for it, right? So I've, you can imagine like, I've just written the number four, this is question four, and this is like my clean work that solves the problem. So if you can, if you can cleanly, you know, solve a problem your first time through, great. Like that, that's what I want. <laughs> so just, just a scan of that. And if, if you've got like, 
some scratch work on the side, and then your, your clean work here, that's fine too. You know, if it's all together, that's fine. You don't need to rewrite the cleanest version, okay? Does that answer okay, your question? Okay, thank you for clarifying. Yes, yeah. thank you. Okay. Yeah, for, for me on tests, maybe I could... Oh. There's, there's, you know, in the time situations, there's inevitably, like, scratch work on the side. You know, so don't worry about that. If you want to, like, draw a circle around it and say scratch, uh, that's fine. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll example that today in some of the problems we do. Okay, like what would I expect you to submit and what, what would you get credit for, what wouldn't you get credit for, that sort of thing. How's that? Okay, um, let's go ahead and get started. That's, that's, uh, that's enough stalling to get into the problems here. I'm going to, if I can figure this out, I'm going to drop the uh, study session file that we're going to be going through here. So that's just a PDF of a bunch of questions. Um, let's see, here's also... If you don't have it yet from Blackboard, this is the mock test. And if you haven't gotten it yet from, um, from Blackboard, here is the topics list. So in the chat now, you should see three files. The file we'll go through today is the chapters one and two study session. So I'm gonna put that up on the screen here momentarily. So that's this file that you should be seeing now. And the other documents that you see are the mock test, which is what I went through Monday. And you can find those lectures, uh, those problem solutions on YouTube in a new playlist, which is also on Blackboard. It's in the course materials section. And then the topics list is also in the course materials. That just is a list of topics um, a list of possible topics for the test. It, it lists which sections are on the test and which are not, and then it just lists the ideas that we talked about in those. Okay? Is that... I hope that helps. I'm trying to pull up the chat. There we go. Okay, got it here now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this chapters one and two study session. Uh, I've just got tons of problems. Some of them are really fast and easy like this one. Some of them will take a bit more time. So stop me if you have any questions uh, and we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it. So let's go ahead and get started. This is three separate problems. So this is problem one, two, and three. Uh, so for problem one, what property of the real numbers is being used? We've got a plus one times x plus y. It turns into a plus one times x plus a plus one times y. What is that property called? We've taken this, this thing on the left and we've multiplied it by this and then by this term by term distributive property perfect nailed it that is the distributive property okay to distribute right yeah, just to distribute means to hand stuff out <laughs> you know the food pantry distributes food uh, the bank distributes money the federal government is distributing stimulus checks so you're just you're handing them out to everyone that qualifies. And mathematically, when you've got a product uh, of a sums, you distribute to everything in the sum. So the product distributes to every item in the sum. So that's a distributive. How about this one? Number two. We've got a plus b times a minus b equals a minus b times a plus b.
what's the name of the property that says a time uh, x times y is the same as y times x? It says that you can switch the order of multiplication. It, it's the same as x plus y equals y plus x, the same name. What do we call that property? Commutative. Commutative. Remember that to commute, right? If you commute to work, you're moving from one place to the next. Um, and you can do so along the same path in reverse, but you're commuting home at that in that case. Um, this is the commutative property. So the first one was distributive. This one is commutative property. And how about the last one? Number three. Four times a plus b equals four times a plus four times b. It's not a trick question. Don't think too hard. We've already seen it. So it's distributive again. Yeah, we've distributed the four. Okay, the first question was actually a little bit harder, I would say, than this last one. All right, instead of distributing like a group of things, we're just distributing a number, which is what a plus one is, but, but that's besides the point. Okay, so we've got distributive, commutative, and distributive properties. There's a few that we didn't use uh, in this list, but uh, these were all back in uh, these were all back in section 1.1 properties of the real numbers. Okay. Evaluating expressions is the next one. So we've got a few here. To evaluate means to actually find the value of, right? To simplify means not necessarily to evaluate, but to evaluate means to find the value. So to actually do the computation. So this first question uh, says 2 to the negative 3 minus 3 to the negative 2. So this is a really good one. I'll, uh, I'll show my work here and I'll do some scratch work on the side if that's okay. And then I'll sort of show you what, you know, on a test, what, what would I expect that you could scan? What's like the only thing you need to scan and what's additional stuff you could scan? Okay. So I know there's this property for exponents where if you've got two to the negative three, that's the same as the reciprocal of the same thing but to the positive power. So two to the negative three is one over two to the three. Now I'm not gonna list what that property is, but that's a property of exponents. And then minus the same thing for this one over three to the negative two. So it's the reciprocal of one over three squared. Okay, now here, scratch work. What is 2 cubed? 2 times 2 times 2 is two, 2 times 4. Yeah, I know what it is. I'm just I'm showing scratch work on the side. This is 8. OK. And what is 3 squared? Oh, uh, I think it's 9, right? So this is 1 over 8 minus 1 over 9. OK. And then, oh boy, we need a common denominator to do this subtraction, right? So what is the common denominator? Well, these are actually co-prime numbers, which means they have no factors in common. So the common denominator, scratch work, is 8 times 9, which is 72. OK, so this is something over 72 minus something over 72. So what are the, what are the new tops and bottoms? So I guess a little bit of scratch work would say, this is 9 over 72. And a little extra scratch work would say this is 8 over 72. The reason, which I'm going to erase here in just a second, is we took this and we multiplied it by 9 on top and bottom. And we took this one and we multiplied it by 8 on top and bottom. OK. So that, that sort of thing, you could, you could like do this scratch work in place. 
that's fine. You don't have to use a different color. Um, I will understand what this means. You're, you're just you're finding the common denominator. Okay, that, that's fine if you want to do it in place. Anyway, so where are we in the problem? Now we're at the end. We've got 970 seconds minus 870 seconds, which is 170 second. So what do you need to scan, right? If this was a test question, you know, there would be, you know, maybe let's say this is literally the first question on the test. So if you've printed out your test, then you can just write, write like I've done here, scratch work on the side, but you don't need that. You could, you don't have to scan that if you've done it on a separate paper. What I would like to see is, is this. If you've done this on scratch paper and you, you, you didn't print out the test, um, what I would like is number one, like just put the number one because it is the first question. You don't have to rewrite the whole question. Sometimes they'll be long, right? There'll be like a sentence or two. You don't have to rewrite it and, and waste your time. You could just start writing this and that's okay. And if off to the side, you also have this, that's okay too. All right. I, I, I think that really should clarify like what I'm expecting you to scan and, and what, you, what you should turn in, whether you've printed the test or not. Okay, let's, let's go to the next question then. Okay, uh, evaluate the square root of 242 over the square root of 2. Okay, what's the first thing we do here? Anyone? Take the square root out of the denominator. How do you mean? Uh, we should multiply both by, multiply the fraction by the square root of 2. Okay, we, we could we could try something like that. Um, so we'd have to do that on top and bottom. Okay, I'm gonna put an asterisk here because this is this is extra work. It's not necessarily a step in the wrong direction, but it's, it's extra work. We'll see that at the end. So this is square root of two times square root of 242 over two. So up top, that is the square root of 484, because we can combine those square roots. Okay, now what do we do? Well, we want to handle that square root, right? We want to see if we can actually determine the value, right? It'd be great if we knew it. I don't know what, mm hmm The square root of 484, I think it's 22. So it'll be just 22 over two. It is. It is 22. You know your perfect square is up to 22 by heart. You're awesome. <laughs> Not all of us do. How can we figure that out without just knowing it? Because we're not allowed technically to use a calculator. So what's that? What's the process using the properties of radicals that can get us there? So let me let me provide an alternative here. I like what I like your thought process here by like combining radicals together in order to simplify it some. How about we just do that from the beginning? Remember that radicals like this on top and bottom in a quotient, you can rewrite that like this as one radical. That's totally allowed. 
And the reason is, is because these are powers. You have a to the one half, square root of a, divided by b to the one half, that's the square root of b. And that equals, if you remember your rules for powers, it's a over b to the one half. So we can just make this change right away. Okay, now, scratch work. What's two dividing 242? Well, this is a pretty quick process because it's two, subtract zero, four, you know, it's, okay, two times, subtract, you get zero, and then two again, subtract, you get zero. It's like you could, you could literally do out this long division and you'd get 121. This is the square root of 121. That is a perfect square that's much smaller than 22 squared. So maybe you know your perfect square is up to 10 or 11. Maybe not. But I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, couldn't you just square it from the beginning, or is that wrong? Like square the whole. Uh, fraction from the beginning to get rid of the radicals, or is that wrong? That's not necessarily wrong. Right now we have we have positive numbers, so the squaring isn't going to destroy any information like negatives, right? So squaring is going to be a reversible process at this point. Does that make sense? Like if this was negative and we squared it, we'd get a positive, and so we've lost that information. So which means it's not reversible. Okay, okay. So if you square from the beginning, you get 242 over 2, which is 121. So we've squared it. And then what do you need to do at the end? You need to reverse the process. Square root it to get 11. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it now. Okay. Yeah. Could, yeah. If you square this thing here, it turns into 121 only, and then you have to square root it to undo. Yeah. That's a huge, that's a, a great question. And it illustrates that when you're evaluating something, it has some numerical value at the beginning. In this case, it's 11. That's what it is. If you decide to try something like squaring, well, the original number is no longer the same. You've, you've changed it. So if in your final answer you write 121 because you forgot to undo what you did, well, that's not what the original value was. It's square of the original value. So you need to remember that whatever you do needs to be reversible. And that's, that's exactly what we did up here by multiplying by 1. Multiplying by one changes nothing. You have the same value. So, good question. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Alrighty, 